Hey guys, it's Chris Bate with Cheat the Game coming back at you and today we're going to get into uh, data types and uh, it was a great suggestion uh, that was given on one of the last videos I believe. It says nice stuff but I think someone should do a tutorial on data types otherwise I guess it's more confusing than helpful to beginners and he had a very good point so I went and talked to uh, Seneki about that and he made us one and it's really good but we're getting towards the end of our core basics and then we're going to start you know applying all these to games we're going to you know show you everything that's happening in the game you know how we can use it in the games and things like that it's going to get real interesting we just had to get over that uh basic comp right quick and i appreciate you guys sticking it out with me sorry this is running a little bit behind it's been a really hectic week but uh i'm going to go ahead and uh, get cynic up here and we're going to go ahead and get over the uh, get through this lesson he does a real good job if you happen to see him over at the discord or on OpenCheatTables.org, how about throwing him a thank you he's doing this on his own time he's not asking for anything in return and he's doing a really good job and helping keep ctg keep going like i say i can't really teach this because i'm learning this stuff too i know a very basic lua probably you know more than a beginner but not enough to teach it so you know and i need people that know what they're doing and these guys have volunteered all their times and i also want to thank all the people over at the discord open cheat tables and the facebook channel ctg you know for all your hard work that you put into these things you know keep it going and uh, y'all do such an excellent job i really thank you from the bottom of my heart i also want to thank my partners right quick these guys keep cheating the game running without their donations every month i have to close shop a long time ago so thank you to each and every one of these guys i really do appreciate it but today will be a, a lesson uh the tutorial on data types uh he'll get into that but, and then the very next lessons we're getting into the games itself and it's going to combine everything we've learned into one and it's it, so if you have not went through the basic tutorial sections uh, you're going to be lost so just let you know up front so uh, I do have a playlist available. Uh, please click on the playlist. You'll see it for beginners. You'll see Lua for Extreme Beginners. Uh, and click on that and go through those lessons before you continue on with anything further because each one is building on to the next one. So I thank Cracker. I thank Seneki uh, for all their help in getting this done and all the others that contributed. Thank you so much. All right, I'm going to go ahead and bring it up. Hey, everyone. We had a question about what the different data types actually were. So I'm going to give you a quick introduction on the different data types and hopefully you'll understand the difference between all the types. Right, so we have a byte, two bytes, four bytes, eight bytes, float and double. Now these are all the different data types, but these are the most common types that you will come across in Cheat Engine. So, a byte has an 8-bit length value, and 2 bytes is 16-bit, and so on. Now, the float is 32-bit, and double is 64-bit. The reason I'm talking about the length, uh, we'll get into that a bit later on in the video. But these are also known as single precision 32-bit floating point double precision 64-bit floating point. And then under here, you'll see things like word, D word, Q word. And, and you're probably thinking, well, what, what are they? So you've got your byte and a two byte value is uh, known as a word. Now you may have seen this in Cheat Engine uh, with the LEA, load effective address. So LEA word PTR, that means it's loading two byte address into another register. And D word, same thing, it's just loading four bytes and so forth. Now, the reason we have float and double is because all of these can only be whole numbers. And we as humans don't like to work just in whole numbers. Sometimes we, we need to use like a decimal point. That's where your float and your doubles come into it. Now the range 
with all these different values. So unsigned just means positive integer only. And what I mean by integer is whole number. So your unsigned range for one byte is 255 maximum and zero. So that's a total of 256 digits. So when you go to a signed range, that includes negative integers. You have to halve your maximum value. Now, because that maximum value is 255, that becomes 127 because zero is taking up one of those spaces. That's why these are perfectly even. But as you can see, the two byte range, much, much more room to work with. And again, with the four bytes. And the reason for this is because we don't just go one byte. So two bytes is twice as many as one byte. Logically speaking, yes, that's true. It is twice as much. The value range is actually 256 times 256. And then to get to four bytes, that's times 256 again, times 256, and so forth to get to your eight bytes. Now, so these uh, float and double values are quite huge. I can't even figure that equation out in my head because I'm not a scientist or math genius. Um, but you would have seen that with your calculator, possibly, if you just keep going and mashing multiply and enter just to see how high you can get it before it errors out. So these are, I believe that E stands for exponent, but don't quote me on that. Uh, you probably will never need to use values this high or this low. But it's good to know that you've got all of that range to work with. Now, you, the other thing with float and double, they're not exactly what we type in. So like, say for instance, we wanted a value of 1.45. Cheat Engine will automatically change the numbers and add as many decimal points as it needs to get it as close to 1.45 as we can get. And you'll usually see in game the value that it's being given, even though it's not exactly 1.45, will show up as 1.45 because the game will interpret that value for us providing the programmers put that in. But yeah, let's move on to why we have this many in byte and this many in byte, uh, two bytes. So it all comes down to binary. Binary is what our processes read. Like any information that's given to them is given in a bunch of zeros and ones. And this is known as the base two uh, number system. And that means anytime, you know, like this can only be a one or a zero. Uh, so this seemingly random string of numbers we actually read right to left. And these first eight digits, so each one of these is a bit, and eight bits makes one byte. That has a decimal value of 178 and a hexadecimal value of B2. Now, um, how we calculate this, I'll show you a bit later on. 
but yeah, you basically double the amount of bits and there's your two bytes or 16 bit range. Now the decimal value of this is significantly larger. The hexadecimal value, it's only four digits. And then we double it again. And see, we started off with that eight bit range of 172. Just by adding a further 24 bits, we have a decimal value of 641,963,186. Now, this is a very large number. And it's quite a mouthful to say, which is why the hexadecimal value system was basically invented. It's like, how can we make some sort of common ground that our computer can relay a number to us and we can read it? And we may not fully understand it right away, but it makes a whole lot more sense to us looking at 264394B2, then it does looking at 00100011 and so on. Um, so how do we, how does this equate to that number? So you start from right to left, each shift left, this value the power of this value increases by two each time. So the more numbers you have, the bigger its decimal representation is going to have. So we start with one and it goes to two and then four, eight, 16, 32 and so forth. So that little eight bit example that I gave you, how did we actually know that was worth 178? So we get the zero. That doesn't mean anything like it's zero, so it's nothing. So we go zero, move on to the next one. Its power is two, and there's a one there. So we count that number plus two. And then there's two more zeros. We can ignore what they're worth plus zero, plus zero, and we count from right to left. So one, two, four, eight, 16, is this one, and 32 is this one. So plus 16, plus 32, plus zero, plus 128 equals 178. Don't really need to know how to count in binary, but it does help to understand if you know how the counting works. Now you may have noticed as well, B2 was always at the end of those hexadecimal values, along with 9.4 B2 in the last two examples. And that's because these are related directly to these values. Moving on to hexadecimal. So this will be the most common type outside of our base 10 counting system, which is zero through to nine. It's the one that we learn at school. It's the one that we count all our money in. It's basically everything that we count with. And it's just the one that we know why they chose that it just seemed to work better with everything that we did like a long time ago they decided that now, base 16 which is this one you can see we have zero through to nine and then a b c d e f and we have zero one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then A becomes 10, B becomes 11, and so forth up to 15. So, where do we go from there? So, 
one zero in hex, not ten by the way. If you refer to it as one zero one 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 two, it will stop your brain from confusing it with what we're used to, which is ten, eleven, twelve, because one zero is actually sixteen, all the way up to one F thirty one. And that goes on and on and on, all the way up to 255. It's easier to count hex using these two digits, just so you don't get lost. So I would represent 3 as 0, 3, just for my own sanity. You may not need to. But one zero, sixteen, all the way up to FF. Now, two characters of hex is equivalent to one byte in binary. Now, that's why in each of the previous examples, we had B2 at the end, and then we had 94B2, and then I believe it was 26. 4394B2. But just in that example, the 94 and the B2 remained the same despite the decimal value shifting very erratically. Uh, so this is just a byte in hex. This is two bytes in hex, and this is four bytes in hex. I'll just use the maximum value to show you. But if you look back at the value range, you'll see that's the maximum digit on the unsigned range. You really only use unsigned if you're working in decimal, and you generally won't count in hex but you'll see everything coming up in hex like so your addresses will be in hex so you can look at your disassembler find out what addresses this instruction ad accesses and that will automatically try to pick the best fit but it doesn't always get it right. But when you add an address to your list, if it says four byte, and you've got more than four of these pairs in your address list, then you know to change the type. So change the type to eight byte. And if that doesn't, if that number doesn't make any sense, try changing it to a double and you might get a more sensible looking value. So that concludes our introduction to data types and um, you should be able to have a bit of a better understanding of uh, what these actually represent and why they work the way they do. It all comes down to that binary and we've got to use hex so that we as humans can interpret these numbers in a much more manageable way. Like, I would personally much rather work with number or A, D. It's just much easier to work with that than a section of eight zeros and ones for each one of these. Could you imagine every time you wanted to make an address change in cheat engine having to use all zeros and ones instead of just you know, zero through to f happy hacking